So a, a little while ago, I finished reading the chapters due, and it's taken me a little while to get all this written down uh, without just running out, oh, for the love of Smeg, 500 times. But as I say, I finished reading the chapters due a while ago, and quite frankly, I've had a bloody guts full of this. It's not so much anger as it is disappointment, although that disappointment in places has morphed into anger, but it's the sort of disappointment that makes me want to rant. So this is going to be a rant, not a review in the truest sense of the word, or at least in my sense of the word. So um, a fair warning will be given here and now. There will be spoilers galore for all six novels in the Ultramarine series, and probably, if I know me, uh, for some other novels from the Black Library as well. You have been warned. Right. Ultramarines are boring. There's no two ways about it. They are tedious as smeg. Fanboys will no doubt be preparing to hurl themselves at this assault on the sacred warriors of Ultramar, but frankly the light of truth as given to me by the divine emperor of mankind will see these people scattered to the wind. Yes, Ultramarines are boring. Do you want interest for a chapter, or, or at the very least, a first founding chapter? How about, off the top of my head, the Blood Angels? The death of their gene sire Sanguinius has given every single Blood Angel and Blood Angel successor a gene curse for the last 10,000 years. The Salamanders, they are basically genetically modified superhuman killing machine humanitarians. The Dark Angels, they are still atoning for the fact that half the Legion sided against the Emperor during the Heresy. Uh, the Imperial Fists are complete masochists. The White Scars are effectively descendants of Genghis Khan. The Raven Guard are weird but badass. The Space Wolves are awesome. And the Iron Hands have a mechanical fetish. The Ultramarines? They dress like Smurfs, were named after a colour, and are generally uninteresting. The other first founding chapters either have flaws, be they genetic or mental, or else they have an interesting warrior culture that influences their personality and their combat doctrine. But the Ultramarines are portrayed as perfect. Perfect discipline, perfect adherence to Papa Smurf's big book of military tactics, aka the Codex Astartes, perfect equipment, perfect boredom. So it is from that starting point that we properly kick off the rant about the novels with the Omnibus. Specifically, it's the author's note at the beginning of it. Now, at the end of the third paragraph, McNeil says, I decided I wanted to write about the 13th Legion because I think at the time they had a bit of a bad press about being boring simply because they didn't have any uber killy rules and weren't vampires or barbarians in space. I knew differently and set about changing this deeply flawed perception. Now, credit where it's due, that is a noble goal. And if he'd succeeded, well, this would simply be a review about how much of a missed opportunity the chapters do was. Instead of a ran against the whole damned chapter, the novels, and quite probably the Black Library in general for that matter. And I'm talking about the Black Library that publishes the novels, not the Black Library that's hidden in the webway somewhere. So, how did McNeil fail in his lofty goal? Firstly, when you're trying to make a boring chapter interesting, you need interesting characters. The only Ultramarines character of any interest, as far as I'm concerned, has been Pisanius. He's big, gruff, and nicely sarcastic. Or, to put it another way, he actually has a personality. Beyond him, every Ultramarines novel has been filled with characters that are far more interesting than the supposed stars. Nightbringer had a fantastic Inquisitor in it, and a very decent turn from an Adeptus Arbitus in the form of Jenna Sharbin. The Dark Eldar that made up a healthy chunk of the antagonists are far more interesting than dear old Duriel in the Fourth Company. Warriors of Ultramar featured members from an Ultramarine Cessor chapter called the Mortifactors that were, you guessed it, more interesting than their parent chapter. As were most of the mortal troops we encounter for that matter. Hell, of the few snatches we learn about the Death Corps of Krieg were more interesting than most of what the Ultramarines did. McNeil even inserted a subplot where some gangers helped to save the planet, which was more interesting. Uh-huh. And finally, for, as far as the um, omnibus is concerned, Dead Sky Black Sun sent Uriel and Pisanius into the fucking Eye of Terror. 
Yep, the Ultramarines are such an interesting chapter that we have to be separated from them and hurled into a demon-infested rent in the space-time continuum. And once again, our Derek Vanes, Honsu and the Savage Morticians, they are all far more interesting than the Smurfs. But what's most, dare I say it, interesting about Warriors of Ultramar and Dead Sky Black Sun is that they make something of a live McNeil statement in the introduction to the Omnibus. He said the Ultramarines were seen as boring. And yet, the only way, it seems, that he could come up with to counter that was to have Uriel violate certain parts of the Codex Astartes in Warriors of Ultramar, as doing so was the only way to achieve victory. This gets him sent on a death oath, aka suicide mission, by the chapter for being a very naughty boy. I mean, yes, Uriel, don't be so stupid as to actually win a war in a way Papa Smurf didn't foresee. That would be too much like being interesting. Basically, the only way McNeil could apparently find to make the Ultramarines interesting was to have one of them act in an uncodex-like manner and effectively develop his own uber-killy rules. Nice going. All that being said, the Omnibus isn't actually a bad read, but this is alright. So onwards! To the Killing Ground. Unsurprisingly, Uriel and Pisanius get out of the Eye of Terror after violating the Codex a little bit more just for good measure, and end up on an Imperial world that is having ghost problems. It's not a bad continuation of things, and it does have uh, some good moments. But one thing that did crack me up, though, was when Uriel whined about war crimes that had been committed by an Imperial Guard commander. War crimes? Really? How many races did the Ultramarines, never mind the whole damn Legio Astartes, render extinct during the Great Crusade? How many worlds are burned by the Imperium every day because the population wants a taste of freedom? And Uriel has the audacity to stand there with a straight face and whine about war crimes? What an utter twat. Plus, the novel features a grey knight who makes the wonderful observation that Uriel is such an ultramarine. Even the grey knights think the ultramarines are boring. But suffice it to say, they win and get sent back to Macrag. And then we come on to Courage and Honour, which is the beginning of the really tedious stuff. When reading Courage and Honour, I had this overriding feeling that McNeil just couldn't be bothered anymore to even try to do anything interesting with Uriel and the Fourth Company. I mean, as the novel progresses, things start to slide ever closer to parody. Every time Uriel looks upon the Fourth Company banner, he feels a swill of courage and honour. Whenever he looks around when fighting with the Fourth Company, he feels honoured by the courage they show in battle. And just to shake things up, more or less all the characters that are actually of any interest, such as Jenna Sharbin and Miyoko Shanai, get killed. Now, this in and of itself is not necessarily a bad thing, but all the deaths of pre-established characters of interest are handled almost dismissively. It's as if, when writing, McNeil realised that these characters were more interesting than his precious ultra smags, so he decided to kill them as if they were new characters who appeared a scant two pages ago. No, oh, strike that, because some new characters in this book that appeared a scant two pages ago actually got better, more significant and interesting deaths than the pre-established characters of interest. Suffice it to say that by the end, the Ultras had won thanks to their ability to weaponize courage and honor. Frankly, I think it was because they bored the towel to death. And from courage and honor to the chapters do and Fuck me sideways and call me a noise marine. He should have entitled this one Wasted Opportunity or I Have a Boner for Ultramarines because both would be far more accurate. By now, McNeil's descent into complete fanboy psychosis is complete because like every fanboy, he confuses so incredibly full of courage and amazing warriors without peer with interesting. Far too much of every fight featuring a named Ultramarine, such as Player Kalgar, is given over to telling the reader how godlike their battle prowess is. This is not interesting. It wasn't interesting the first time you did it, and it has become increasingly less so every time since. However, that would be forgivable if something of note happened, like Player Kalgar getting gibbed, or Captain Sakaris having his head lopped off. I'll give you a hint, neither of those happened.